And we'll look at everything. I think it's look from everything from the from the top to the bottom and making sure that we're finding the answers to to uh, move the ball on the field, you know, play better as a football team on offense, defense, and special teams. The man said that he, it is on the table. He's evaluating whether to make a change in offensive play caller. Do you think that's something you could adapt to midseason? Uh, I mean, they're not they're not going to reinvent the wheel. Will I be able to adapt? Yes, I will. Um, we will be able to adapt whatever coach make decision um, he makes. Um, and then, you know, from there, we have to go out there and execute and win games. All right, so that's it's a measured answer on his right. part. I would hate to hear what Micah Parsons thinks of the coaching job going on in Chicago right now. So I'll ask you instead. Um, there are a lot of Bears fans, and I know a lot of them closely and personally, who are freaking out today. Should they be? Absolutely. This offense is broken, and they're breaking the quarterback. This is as broken a pass game as you can have in the NFL. There's nothing better, or there's nothing that is getting better. The, the same issues, holding the football too long. So just a couple clips. Play fake, man coverage. I mean, we're holding on to the football for almost five seconds. No one was open. Check it down, throw it away, do something. We have to play faster at the top of our drops. Third and seven, Caleb drops back. No one's open. Okay, great. Move. Get off your spot. Playing so slow at the top of your drop, in, drop is an issue. That ball should be out right now. DJ Moore is open. You're picking the top guy. It's late, and then it's a missed throw because your feet are so late. This is a curl flat read. Everybody in the NFL knows it. Caleb is running from the pocket, getting out of the pocket before anybody's actually even in their route. The pocket just one shuttle move, and you could throw that football down to that curl over the top of, at the top of the screen. I think what's what's going on is there's this isn't just one thing, everybody. Okay. This isn't one thing. If you're Ryan Poles, the general manager, eh, hit the panic button. How do I fix this? How do I stop this? Who is going to fix it? The quarterback at the top of his drop is playing way too slow. He's seeing it way too slow. There are moments when guys aren't open. He will not throw the football away right now. The offense, there's nothing easy. I don't like the scheme. I don't think they're doing anything to help people get open. That's how you get a broken offense. He would. What is it that we are seeing here? Because if, if you consider what's happened in Chicago, and for those who don't know the history of it, they drafted Mitch Trubisky. They kept a lame duck coach for one year, and everything went sideways. They drafted Justin Fields. They kept a lame duck coach for one year, and everything went sideways. They drafted Caleb Williams, the most talented of them all by far, a player who was drafted number one because he is gifted beyond belief. Of that, there is no. there remains no question about his gifts. They keep a lame duck coach. It looks very much like the pattern is repeating itself. More quarterbacks are broken than made, especially in these type of situations right now. And what I fear, what I fear for Chicago fans is this play playing itself all over again in Chicago, where you're keeping a coach that, quite honestly, you probably should have hit the reset button last year mm -hmm. and just gone in with a whole new, whole new slate, knowing that you were going to pick a quarterback, Caleb Williams, and usher in a new era in Chicago. Now you're sitting here, your, your quarterback is regressing in a bad way with all these weapons. He's getting hit. He's playing slow. They can't score. Where do you go? There's nowhere you can go from here, Rex. Like, even if you fired the offensive coordinator, you really think that's going to all of a sudden just get just rejuvenate this offense and going to make the quarterback play faster? It's these things don't usually happen when you make these type of moves in season. You know what else is concerning? You're not making any plays with his feet. The thing that you you know you kind of fell in love with him coming out of school was he was this unbelievably creative athlete, and we saw I'm not doing that. So, so is he just stuck trying to be this pocket passer because they're forcing him to be a pocket passer? That's the another element of this is so alarming is the stuff that you loved. That's that's not even showing itself. Yeah, you know the most alarming thing to me. You got rid of a guy named Justin Fields, who, by the way, was a generational talent in, a, in his own right. Mm -hmm. Okay, because he held the ball too long. What's right. this cat doing? Yeah. Same damn thing. It's it's and so copy. to me, look, you're gonna fire this coach. Shit, he's he, he wins one out of every three games. Right. Like you're damn, you're you're definitely gonna fire him in in this offense coordinator, Sean Waldron. Shane Waldron. Uh, Shane Waldron, uh, Waldron. I understand you bringing him in. They were 25th in pass protection in Seattle when you when you have a franchise quarterback. Yeah, 25th. Oh, okay. Like, come on. Like, some of the decisions are, are this absolutely brutal. Talented. And and look, you got three receivers. DJ this not kid Keenan set Rome. up. Was he not set up? We all thought he was set up for immediate success. 
because of the talent that was around this guy. And what's missing? I don't know, but the this, kid, you're right. He's like this or that. He's not getting better like rookies do normally. This game was 13-3, and it felt like 40 to nothing. Yeah. It, it, you know, for the majority of the game, it was 13. It felt like 40 to nothing. There's, there's This ta- offense is way too talented for the quarterback to be playing this poorly. Now, I don't want to put this all on Caleb. Caleb's not playing well, no. But this scheme does nothing to make anything easy for anyone. It's not just – I think this offensive line is actually playing solid. There's no way that you, they should have gotten sacked nine times today. No way. There, there is so much that is at stake and so much going poorly for this offense. Dan, I want to read you a tweet that I saw from Lewis Riddick. I just remembered it. Lewis Riddick, watching this game yesterday, tweeted, the Bears offense has no plan, just calling plays like ordering off a menu. Right. Mm-hmm. There's no sequencing of events. Great play callers – it's a constant sequence of events. I'm calling this, and I'm going to see what they're going to do because then I'm going to get to this and then this and then this. They're just looking at a sheet full of great plays and calling one saying this is a good play, but there, there's no correlation to why you're calling it. Yes, th- this is an organizational failure. It is an organizational disaster of epic proportion, and the fans have every right to be as disgusted as they overwhelmingly are. <laughs> the comeback of the night. Let's go, Lions and Texans. C.J. Stroud in Houston taking on Jared Goff and the hottest team in football. And then second quarter, and Dan, what is this? Well, the chance that the Texans had was their defense was going to have to play dominant football. Autry from that backside leads to a second kind of bad break, bro, turnover interception for Jared Goff. And then late in the half, the Texans are up by nine, and then it's Met- and now they're way ahead. Just a phenomenal throw and catch from C.J. Stroud to John Mechie. Amazing moment. Houston's offense was on fire in the first half. Okay, so Jared Goff has been ridiculously accurate. He had only thrown four interceptions all year. He threw five in this game. Yeah, three of them are not on him. This one is, though. He's throwing the ball high to the pylon. Jameson Williams flattened it off. Miscommunication no. leads to a pick. But now we're in the fourth quarter, and the Lions way behind. They're starting to come back, and here's Amon well, What a round. great stretch of three plays in a row by Ben Johnson. And play action, play action screen, another play action screen, touchdown Detroit. And then the defense. The defense, again, this this is a defensive line that's searching without Aiden Hutchinson. Knows the Darius Smith last night, but they find a way late to get to CJ Stroud. They force a punt and then they take over, and here comes Jameer Gibbs. They got the run game going on the perimeter a little bit in the second half. An explosive play was huge for this offense. That leads to this. Rex Jake Bates, 58-yard field goal. Give me the read on the kick. Done. Too easy. Look at that. Done. Don't never a doubt, Greedy. Never a doubt. That knots the game at uh, 23. And so the frustration on the part of the Texans there, and it is the Lions who come all the way back, and they find a way to win it. And so what do we say about a team that clearly doesn't have – I'm old enough to remember a time when pitchers would pitch late into games, and they would say that even when they lose their fastball or they didn't have something working that night, they know other ways to beat you. The Lions beat them last night without their best stuff. Yeah, that's why they're the best team in football. And that's the reality is when you can play so poorly – that's the worst game they played in two years, the worst – game their quarterbacks played in four years. When you can go beat a playoff team on the road and play that poorly, that tells me how great of a team you are. Uh, I know that they can dominate teams. To yeah. go do that, that, that makes you a great team. Are they the best team in the NFL? <sighs> I hate to disrespect Kansas City, I, but I think they are. I, I think the difference is that, like, their offense to me, and it, this was off night, off night for the, the Detroit Lions. They awfully. But they – Great teams just find ways to win games. Your quarterback throws five interceptions, and, and you still find a way. We all know this. Like usually, like one of the big stats is like turnover margin. Like right. you, you know, you commit one turnover, your chance of winning are like slim to none. Right. Five turnovers in a game, and you still find a way. That's a hell of a team that put, that, that came back and won that game. The yeah, first time in NFL history, I think, by the way, or since 1970, that you're you you're down 16 points. And you had five interceptions. Still find a way to win? What? Yeah. Like, there's no way in hell. Football team. Yeah. Uh, by the way, and you mentioned, Dano, I think it's uh, that people overlook this. All right. You you mentioned on the road. They played four of their last five games on the road. Mm-hmm. And by the way, won all of them. And so to me, yeah, I, Grinny, I think they are the best best team. 
Their special teams, we've seen them dominate at times, okay, especially against Tennessee when they hung 52 on them. We've seen the offense be absolutely dominant sure. over a three, the last three years, really. And now the defense. Right. We said that all along the defense – had to take big big strides this year. They've done it. The only thing that ended last night was Jared's MVP campaign. Jared, Jared you, you're not going to have a game like that and win the MVP, okay? Two things could be true at the same time. When it's win or go home, you got to go through Kansas City. There's, right. they, they have earned that right. Also, the Lions are the best team in football. Now, can they go and beat Kansas City when it matters the most? That's when we're going to find out some point. Well, we won't get to that February. game until February. So. <laughs> but, but let me just say this. They're 8-1. and one. Can I just read you their next three games? They play Jacksonville Nine and one. this coming week. They're a 13-point favorite. They will then play the Colts. 10-1. and one. They will then play the Bears. 11-1. I mean, boy, these feel like winners, right? So, I mean, you're looking at 11-1 and one before the next time they face a game in which they will not be a, a double-digit favorite. But